audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. That's not enough to just come forward. We need to go forward as followers of Jesus Christ. That's really what the Christian life is. It's a lifetime of discovery. It's a lifetime of learning. It's a lifetime of transformation. Today, Pastor Greg Laurie launches a series on discipleship. Disciples are those who make a concerted effort to follow the Lord and to learn. The Christian life is one of constant growth. Hey, listen, stall and you fall. This is the day when the lost are found. be on the team, it's another to be in the action. It's one thing to watch from the bench, it's another to get in the game. Well, this weekend, Pastor Greg will be in the game presenting the gospel at his annual Harvest Crusade in Anaheim, California. It's an exciting time, so do be in prayer for it. But today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie helps us chart a course for getting in the game called Discipleship. And he begins by commenting on a previous evangelistic outreach that had just concluded. We're still rejoicing that over 10,000 people made a profession of faith a short time ago. Notice I use the phrase profession of faith. They don't say 10,000 people were saved or 10,000 people became Christians because I don't know if they became Christians. I hope they did. I pray they did. But only time will tell, right? Because the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. And the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So we're praying we'll see the fruit spiritually in their life, the results, the works that follow a true conversion. Because it's not enough to just come forward. We need to go forward spiritually. And then we continue to grow as followers of Jesus Christ. That's really what the Christian life is. It's a lifetime of discovery. It's a lifetime of growth. It's a lifetime of learning. It's a lifetime of transformation. Last Sunday I was at our church, Harvest Kumalani, and they all say aloha to you. So I attended a number of board meetings while I was there. By board meetings I mean on surfboards. (laughs) And uh, I'm a really bad surfer, by the way. I never surf in California, but when I'm over there, a lot of people from our church get up very early in the morning and go out for what is called a dawn patrol right, very early. And so it's so cool because you're out with like 15 people from our church and everyone's giving waves away and cheering each other on. God bless you, you know, not fighting for waves or anything like that. So I've been trying to learn how to do stand-up paddle. Do you know what I'm talking about? As opposed to laying down at a board and paddling with your arms. Stand up, you have this really big board and a paddle and you paddle in the waves. And it's been challenging, I have to admit, because I'm not very stable. I fall a lot. And so when I I caught a few waves and I even got a little watch. There's this little digital watch and it will tell you how many waves you caught. I have a friend named Jim who always tells me how many waves he caught. He says, look, I caught 27 waves. So I got my wave watch on and after I was done, I looked at it and the screen said, seriously? Question mark. And what is this? And then I pressed a button and it said, such a loser. I couldn't believe that. So... I disabled the mockery. Uh, No, this is not true. I think I caught seven waves and that's really being generous. But here's what I discovered. You catch the wave, you're in the wave, you're riding the wave in, and then when the momentum of the wave stops, you slow down, and that's where I always fall. And so you gotta keep paddling, gotta really dig in once the wave has stopped to turn around and go catch another wave. And so I discovered stall and you fall. Hey, listen, what is true of stand-up paddle is also true of the Christian life. Stall and you fall. The Christian life is one of constant growth, constant learning, as I said, constant transformation. But here's the problem. Some will make what I would call a profession of faith. They'll pray a prayer because maybe they want to get, well, fire insurance, They don't want to go to hell when they die. So they want to cover that base. I mean, they're willing to take Jesus as their Savior, but not necessarily as their Lord. 
They're willing to take on Christ as their friend, but not necessarily as their God. And they stay in sort of this baby-like state. You know, babies are cute. I love babies, don't you? Every now and then I get to dedicate babies. And you never know what a baby will do. That's the fun part. I've had them throw up on me before, of course, uh, while I'm praying for them. And now as I have been doing this for a while, I'm meeting more people that are young adults and sometimes not even that young that will say, you dedicated me when I was a baby. And I'm looking up at them going, wow. <laughs> so, you know, babies are cute when they're babies. But babies have to be cared for. Initially you have to nurse a baby. Then the baby learns how to eat soft foods. And then you cut the food up in the little bite-sized pieces for them. And one day the baby picks up a spoon or a fork and they start learning how to feed themselves. And they get more food on them than in them. <laughs> and I feel sorry sometimes for servers in restaurants after a toddler's been in there. You look under the high chair, there's just mounds of food everywhere splattered up against the wall on the ceiling, you know. That's a little baby learning how to eat. It's okay. It's cute. That's what babies do. That's how babies roll, actually. But it would be sad if someone was still behaving that way when they're in their 20s, right? You still have to feed them and you still have to make airplane noises when you're coming in with a bite to keep their attention. All right, well, what is true of babies can also be true of us as we grow spiritually. We all start out as babies. We all start out with a hunger for the Word. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. And by the way, there's no shame in that. That very hunger for spiritual truth is an indicator of spiritual health. Because a healthy person is a hungry person. And if you're a young Christian, if you're brand new in the faith, I'm so glad you're here. Because we're here to help you grow up spiritually. Here's the objective. We want to take you from getting your food in bite-sized pieces, and that's effectively what a sermon is. I sort of prepare it and cut it up uh, and give it to you, but we want to teach you how to read the Word of God, process its truth, learn how to think, and then live biblically. You know, when I was a young person in school, I had many teachers say to me, Greg Laurie, will you just grow up? Because I was always acting like a little kid. And sadly, I just heard this yesterday <laughs> from my wife and a grandchild. Uh, because what happened was we, were, we ate dinner and there was a store that had just closed their doors and there were still some salespeople in there. <laughs> I shouldn't even admit this. I don't know why I'm saying it. So, you know, there are people in there. My wife's standing there looking in, and my grandkids are looking in. So I, I knocked on the window and then ran off. And so everybody turned. There's my wife standing there. She says, Greg, will you just grow up? Stop acting like a sixth grader. And then my granddaughter Riley said, Papa, you're a pastor. You shouldn't be acting like a sixth grader. <laughs> And she was right, of course. It's time to grow up. It's great to have you join us today for A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie from Harvest Ministries in the U.S. Today we're kicking off a new series called Discipleship, The Road Less Taken. Pastor Greg continues now. Discipleship is all about growing up. <laughs> it's about going to the next level, if you will. It's about really living the Christian life to its fullest, living the Christian life as it was meant to be lived. It's called being a disciple, then in turn going out and making disciples of others. That brings us to our first passage, Matthew 28. These are the words of Jesus. Now, these are familiar words. Words that many of us have even committed to memory. But I want you to consider the fact that these were the last words of Christ before he left earth. This is after the crucifixion. He's risen again from the dead. And he's going to ascend into heaven now. So this is the final charge from the Lord. You know, last words matter. If someone's on their deathbed and they have one last statement, we always want to know what it was. There's an emphasis on last words. And so these are the last words of Christ to us. And they're a charge. They're a command. 
Uh, they're a commission. That's why we call this the Great Commission. Matthew 28, verse 16, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some of them doubted. Jesus said to his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There it is. We're all commanded to go and make disciples. But listen to this. It takes one to make one. So we say, yeah, we should go make disciples, right. Are you doing that? Are you fulfilling the Great Commission? Are you making disciples of others? You say, well, I'm not really sure what that means. Good, that's what we're gonna talk about. Because before you can make a disciple, you have to be a disciple. Sort of like when you fly and you're seated there and they're going through the routine of what to do in case you lose uh, altitude and you need to use your uh, oxygen masks. And so they'll say, if the oxygen mask should come down, put it, if you're traveling with the child, put it on yourself first and then on the child. That seems counterintuitive. Seems like, oh man, if we're losing uh, altitude, I should take the mask and put it on the child first and then me, put the needs of the child. No, first, no, put it on yourself first because I can't help the child if I'm blacking out, right? The same is true in discipleship. I can't help somebody else be a disciple of Jesus if I am not first a disciple myself. Again, it takes one to make one. So listen to this. While it is true that not every person who makes a profession of faith is a Christian, it is equally true that not every Christian is a disciple. Let me put it another way. Every disciple is a Christian, but not every Christian is necessarily a disciple. So you should not say, well, this doesn't apply to me. I'm happy with fire insurance and I'll leave it at that. No. If you're a true follower of Jesus, you should want to be a disciple. And I'm asking you this question, how many of you are disciples of Jesus? So let me ask you this question. How many of you would consider yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ? Raise up your hand. Ah, you didn't all raise your hand. Because you know I ask trick questions, don't you? And yeah, well, I think I am, but I want to see where he's going, and then I'll decide if I'm a disciple. And you know, that's okay. That just shows you're actually very smart. That's all that shows. But really, every one of us should be able to say, I'm a disciple. Maybe not a perfect disciple, not someone who has this totally down, but I'm a growing disciple of Jesus, and everyone should be a disciple of Jesus. Because really, what is discipleship? It's living the Christian life as it was meant to be lived. Discipleship is living the Christian life as Jesus taught it, as the early church understood it. It's real Christianity. But I think some are reluctant to want to live that way because it seems, well, radical. That's why I called this series Discipleship, The Road Less Taken. Because some don't want hardship. They don't want a challenge. They don't want difficulty. So they take the path of least resistance instead of discipleship road. And listen to this. Discipleship road is challenging but it's fulfilling. It's hard, but it's more than worth it. Because as I said, it's living the Christian life as it was meant to be lived. And there's sort of like three phases we can go through. And I was reading a book on discipleship written by Dwight Pentecost. It's out of print now. Uh, but the title of it is Design for Discipleship. He had three words he used to describe different phases of where people are at spiritually. The three words were curious, convinced and committed. And you fit into one of these categories today. Category number one, curious. Uh, Jesus had a lot of curious people gather around him, especially when he performed a miracle. And by the way, his most popular miracle was when he multiplied the fish and loaves. I mean, healing blind people, that's awesome. Restoring deaf to those that can't hear, fantastic. Curing a leper, amazing. Free lunch, now we're talking. So when Jesus would show up, the crowds would show up. They would listen to him. But it wouldn't really impact them for the most part. And they'd just go on back home as they did before. So we would classify those people as curious. And that may be you. You're here today. You're curious. You know, I'll go to church today. But some of you have already mentally checked out. You know, you're updating social media. 
You're looking around for Pokemon still. <laughs> Even though that's long over with, you're still looking for him. Or uh, you're distracted. You're curious, but not that curious. And you're already checking your watch and planning your exit plan. But then there's the next level, which is interesting. It's convinced. It's convinced. In other words, you believe these things are true. You would sit here today and say, Greg, I actually agree with everything you're saying. It's all true. Now maybe it doesn't impact you personally, but you give intellectual assent to it. Uh, which is an important step. So that's being convinced. Here's an interesting passage. We read that the first miracle Jesus did, turning water into wine. In Cana of Galilee, uh, in John 2, 11, it says he did that miracle and his disciples believed in him. Well, wait, what? His disciples believed? I thought they were already believers. Oh, they were, in a sense. See, they'd gone from curious to convinced. They were so convinced they were starting to follow him, but at that point of that miracle, they went from convinced to committed. Have you? Have you gone from convinced to committed? You say, well, what does it mean? What it means is it impacts you and the way that you live, and you say, now I want to be a disciple, and I want to make disciples of others. Pastor Greg Laurie with Good Counsel today on the importance of discipleship. It's the first message in a new series called Discipleship, The Road Less Taken. And there's more to come next time here on A New Beginning. So curious, convinced, committed. In your heart of hearts, where are you on that journey? Curious, convinced, committed? Well, if you've never taken a step of coming to the Lord to have your sins forgiven and asking Him to be your Savior, you can do that today. Pastor Greg has a special message just for you if you're at that point right now. God is just a prayer away. You know, it doesn't take years to become a Christian. It doesn't take months. Frankly, it doesn't even take hours. It can happen so quickly. It just starts with you saying to God, I know I'm a sinner. I know that you love me. I know that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and pay for those sins and then to rise again from the dead. And I want him to come into my life. So here's my question to you. Have you done that yet? Because Jesus, who did die on that cross and rose again from the dead three days later, is alive and standing at the door of your life right now. And he's knocking and he's saying, if you'll hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in. Why don't you just stop whatever it is you're doing and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, but I know that you are the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. I'm sorry for my sin, and I turn from it now, and I choose to follow you from this moment forward. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, the Bible promises that God has heard your prayer and has answered that prayer. The Bible says that we will confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God bless you. You've made the right decision, the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. And we'd like to help you start off right living for the Lord. We've got a pack of resources called the New Believers Growth Pack, and we'd love to send it your way. It'll answer many of the questions that you might have and help you build a firm foundation for your faith. Just ask for a New Believers Growth Pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team is available to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Well, next time on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg offers more good counsel for those of us reluctant to stand up and be counted as one of the Lord's own. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called, Are You His Disciple? 
If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.